guys, Debbie here. Got a bit of a different video for you today and I'm really excited to do it. It's not going to be a makeup tutorial. I've done my makeup off camera today. Just wanted to have a bit of me time and do that. But I really wanted to put a video up for you guys and I wanted to do something a bit different. So this one is going to be my fashion, but shown to you through photographs, covering from the late 70s to kind of about the mid 90s. I was pretty experimental with fashion. I loved clothes and... I had a ball choosing different outfits and kind of changing up my aesthetic based on what I was wearing, almost like getting into character for the clothes that I was wearing. So there's some interesting pictures in here, shall I say, and I can't wait to show some of them to you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Grab yourself a drink and a snack, put your feet up. Let's take a little bit of a trip down memory lane. <laughs> So before we jump into the video, just a couple of words about me if you're new here. I'm Debbie, I'm 52. I like to experiment with colourful makeup on my channel and inspire you, whatever your age, to do the same. And yeah, just have fun with the makeup collection that you own. I'm on a bit of a no-buy this year, or low-buy. I'm, I'm getting tempted by a couple of things here and there. But generally, I'm showing you how to be creative with what you already have and showing you that age just doesn't matter at all and you can rock whatever the hell you like because it's just makeup at the end of the day so if that sounds something that you could vibe with then I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel but jumping into this video so this was inspired by my friend Jane Wilkes I only recently met Jane through her channel I um was introduced to her by one of you guys actually and you said to follow her on Instagram which I did and I've just been so inspired and obsessed quite frankly with some of the makeup looks that she did so Jane if you get to watch this the makeup look is kind of a homage to the kind of makeup that you do it's nowhere near as, as creative and as wonderful as, as the makeup looks that you do but you've definitely inspired me recently to kind of take things a bit more to the goth side and do a bit of graphic liner as well which Jane is is just a master at so she did this video last weekend and she's got the second part of it this weekend I haven't watched it yet but I watched the first one and I just enjoyed it so so much because it brought so many memories back for me of the fashion that I used to wear and I think whatever age you are you'll enjoy it because seeing some of this fashion from the past, but it's always referenced again, you know, in um, modern culture, we're always borrowing from the 80s or the 90s, but you'll be able to see some of this firsthand and actually see some of the items real, because I do still have some of these items that I'm wearing in the photos. So before I get into the photos, just one thing to say, there weren't digital photos, of course, in that time, so we were filming either on a 24-shot film or a 36-shot film. Hard to believe now, so filming on a 35mm camera and having to send them off to be developed, and when they came back, they were quite often not as good as you were hoping, and out of your 24 shots, maybe three or four were any good, and a lot of them were quite blurry, so... There's some that aren't the greatest in here, but they do show the fashion and I've photographed them with my camera because I haven't got a scanner. So hopefully I've been able to enhance them enough now for you to be able to see them as I would want you to. But the first one is Debbie when she was nine in 1977. And my mum and dad bought me 10 horse riding lessons. And this is me on my horse. She was called Grey Link. I don't know why, because she's brown and everything seemed to be brown in the 70s. I think this outfit, I've picked this one in particular because I used to live and die in brown and green and yellow as well, like that mustardy yellow colour. And our wallpaper at the time was all those sort of colours as well. It was all these, yeah, patterns from the 70s were awful. But flares were the thing, and so I used to wear these brown flare trousers everywhere. So this was me, a little bit of a tomboy at that time, doing my horse riding with my crazy corkscrew curled hair, and that was my natural colour then. These days it, it's dyed this colour, but that, that was the natural colour, and it kind of faded over time, but which made my mum very sad. And I always straighten my curls now, but there's quite a few curly girl pictures in here. <laughs> Okay, the next one I want to show you, I've cut my hair off by this time and it was kind of the era that Princess Diana was in the papers a lot and I was like enthralled by how she looked and 
never really been a royalist up to that point but I was just taken with her hairstyle and just the way she carried herself and so I wanted my hair to be the same as hers and yeah so that was very much an inspiration in terms of like my hairstyle of the time and you can see my hair's gotten a lot uh, more of a mousy shade in, in this photo. I was about 14 I think in this picture here and I used to always match my socks to my top to my trousers and those shiny shoes that I'm wearing those uh, flat brogues I lived and died in those I thought they were fantastic and then the belt to match and I haven't still got these trousers but they were just kind of elasticated waist but really really comfortable outfit but I thought I was so stylish because those socks matched the outfit Next one up, I've got a bit of double denim for you. And this one, I think, when you look at it, the jeans of today don't look too much different, I don't think, to these. Because these were very high waist, kind of mom jean kind of um, effect. And I always used to wear the denim jacket with them and I wore boots a lot at that time. But these were kind of like a boot cut jean, but really, really high waisted. And I don't know what was going on with my hair in this picture though, quite frightful. And I thought it was such a trendy teen. And now when I look back on it, oh, I, I look terrible to be honest. But, but yeah, there I am standing in Blackpool. And yeah, that dates the photo for me because I went on a holiday with some friends. So I wouldn't have been 14, I would have been 16. And I went on a holiday with some friends to Blackpool. There was five or six of us went on this holiday and it was the first time away from home away from our parents and yeah there was five of us we fell out there was two of us in one kind of group and three in the other and we weren't speaking by the end but but we all do speak now in fact I've met up with a couple of the girls not too long ago and had a proper reminisce about this particular holiday but there I am thinking on the height of fashion on one of the piers in Blackpool the next picture I want to show you, I'm also 16 and I'd started work. I started work in the September when I was 16. I didn't stay on and do A-levels or go to university. I was dying to get to, to work so that I could earn some money, so that I could buy clothes and makeup and everything that I wanted to spend money on. And so, yeah, that's what I did. So this picture just really amuses me now I see it because I used to always wear tank tops over the top of a blouse I'd wear skyscraper high heels with like a, a real point to the front of them like a proper winkle picker shoe most uncomfortable things ever and I used to strut around in those I'd always wear quite demure longish sort of skirts at that time but more funny than that I think is just looking at the the Christmas decorations, this, you can see the date, it was the 20th of December and we've got like the, the 1980s like tinfoil decorations hanging from the ceiling but more funny than that I think is the computer that I'm sat at so it took up the whole desk as you can see and I sat underneath it. It probably had the processing power of like, I don't know, a Nokia 3210, you know, it was terrible, it, like, it was slow, it was... Yeah, and when you typed, all of the, what you typed on came out of the top of the, the printer as you were typing it. But yeah, that was my first job in the machine room, kind of the back room of a bank. And yeah, I was 16 in that photo. But if you're from the UK, you perhaps remember Deirdre Barlow. I think I look like Deirdre Barlow with my big uh, glasses on there. And I'm still rocking the Lady Diana hairstyle. I had my hair short for two or three years and never really after that most of my life it's been this kind of length that it is now okay next up we've got a bit more double denim and we've got poser debbie for some reason i used to think that it was nice to lay on my cars whenever i got a new car i don't know why i don't know what i was doing that for but there i am this is my very first car it was a fiesta and it had a black grill in the front of me, sprayed it red, and I just thought it made it incredible because I love red, as you might know. Red is my favourite colour for eyeshadow. It's really been my favourite colour all my life. So to get this car and get it sprayed red, I just thought it was amazing. It was an old ratter of a car. It used to break down all the time, but I loved it. And there I am rocking my, my typical uniform of double denim and a pair of boots and thinking I looked the bee's knees in that. And that was when I just passed my driving test when I was 18. I've got another car picture now. So this is a G-Reg, that'll probably date it. I think I was about 19 in this one. 
So I'm sitting on the front of my Metro Clubman and I bought this car from brand new and yeah I just love that car but the outfit there I used to wear in the summer a lot of really patterned things you'll see another dress coming up that I was wearing but and I think the most notable thing in this photo is how I did my hair I used to always take a piece of cloth and kind of tie it in my hair not too dissimilar to what I'm wearing here but it was always a, a piece of cloth that I would tie it up like I don't know, like I look like a Pekingese dog or something, but but it was the fashion of the time because it was the very late 80s, so 88, that kind of time. So, so yeah, 87, 88. So it was when Madonna was in vogue and a lot of the, the fashion was, was definitely borrowed from her aesthetic as such. So, so yeah, that was me when I was only 19, I think. Hey, next up, we've got a picture of me with my ex-husband, actually. I've been married twice. This was my ex, his name was Mark, and we're at a wedding, but I just thought the, the dress was hilarious. It's very much of the time again. I've got, like, massive shoulder pads. I've always loved a shoulder pad, though. I really think it, like, gives you some structure to your clothing, but the 80s were all about those power shoulder pads, of course. But I always like dresses with a bit of interest, like, can you see it kind of stops just above my knee and then I've got the lace going on and yeah, quite a demurgeous. I thought when I had that photo taken that I was fat in that photo and I really hated it and now I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh girl, you had nothing to worry about if I look like that now, you know? But I was so self-critical at that time of how I looked that I kind of looked and I was like this, you know, demure because I like always thought I looked terrible in photographs and I never knew how to pose in them and I always felt, yeah, that I didn't look that great in them. So it's not a great memory for me, but I thought the outfit is actually quite an interesting one because it's very of that time, very formal and not the sort of thing I would wear anymore. All right, next up, this one, I did really like this outfit, but when you think of the age that I was in this, I this was my engagement party for my first wedding. So I got engaged at 18 and married at 20. So I'm 18 here. I can't ma imagine many 18 year olds rocking this shiny, I don't know, long kind of knee or just over the knee length outfit. And also notable at that time was the bubble perm. I really didn't need to to perm my hair today. This is the, the natural state of my hair. I've not straightened it. This is kind of how it looks if I just blow it, blow dry it and do nothing with it. But I wanted to have that proper poodle perm that was all the rage at that time. And so, so that's what I did. And then shortly after that, I tried to brush it all out and it went really frizzy. But, but yeah, I've got it kind of shoulder length, which I think I might go back to at some point. I think that did suit me like that, but not the poodle perm, of course. But I've always loved dancing and my brother was an amazing dancer. He used to love all the music from films like Grease and Saturday Night Fever and he could do all the flips and everything, but I couldn't do that. But I was always in awe of him dancing and he never would dance with me. And then for my engagement party, we took the floor and started the party off, which was a highlight of the evening for me. But I wouldn't have been able to do much with those heels on, would I? And in fact, many years later, I fell off my heels on the dance floor, shattered my elbow, and I've never really danced again, which is really sad, but but there I am with my brother. The next one I've got to show you, I've chopped out the other person because I don't know whether they would want to be shown. I don't see them anymore, but it was somebody from my work. But there's me in a dress that I don't own anymore, but I kind of wish I did because I love crushed velvet so, so much. And I've still got a lot of crushed velvet things in my collection. I'll show you one thing in a moment, but but this dress was from Miss Selfridge. I used to get a lot of my things from Topshop or Miss Selfridge or Chelsea Girl. Do you guys, if you're from the UK, remember Chelsea Girl? But crushed velvet was very much a thing at the time and quite shapeless, to be honest, wasn't it? I mean, that particular dress anyway. And quite clumpy, horrible shoes, I think. But, but yeah, I just thought I was so glamorous because I was wearing a soft kind of crushed velvet, beautiful, I thought, dress. To that particular party and I used to have my hair done for work events, this was a work party. So that was Debbie doing glam but in the late 80s. And I'm not wearing it in that photo but I've still got the crushed velvet kind of cape that I wore to that event. 
so and I do use it sometimes not to wear anymore but as a background for photos on my Instagram fun fact so my marriage was short-lived I got married at 20 and divorced at 24 and I've only been married twice and I've only had a couple of boyfriends I married them both <laughs> so so next up is now the era that we're currently in I've been with Michael for 29 years it'll be our 25th wedding anniversary this year and when we first got together nobody thought it would last because I was going out with Mark who was all clean cut and very good mannered and and whatever and then I started going out with Michael who had a motorbike and this is me on the motorbike and I thought I've got a better photo than this I couldn't find the one I wanted to show you but at that time, all I used to wear is the skinniest jeans I could find and kind of cowboy boots and then a rock t-shirt. And we were going to lots of rock gigs at that time and I've got a, a corker to show you for that in a moment. But that was his first bike. It was a Honda CB900, I think. But yeah, that was his first bike. It was purple with a big red exhaust pipe. We used to call it the Purple Peril. My parents were terrified because I was going out on this bike, but... We used to have a lot of fun in that time. We used to be out all the time. We had a little starter home. We didn't have any money, but we would find enough money to put petrol in the bike and just go for days out and go and see people and, and just, as I say, go to lots of gigs. So very happy time, actually. And it just goes to show that money isn't what, what gives you the memories and makes you happy. So next up is the first ever heavy metal gig that I went to. We went to see Metallica. We think it's 1992 that we went. We were trying to figure it out because you haven't got the date on photos in the same way as you do now with digital photography. So it's trying to remember, but we Googled the actual gig and we think it's 92. So I'd never really been into heavy metal music prior to this. And I liked the sort of synth pop of the time. So. I really liked things like Visage, I liked Culture Club, I liked Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, um, bands from that era. But And I liked disco as well, things like Rufus and Shaka Khan, because I used to love going out and dancing. But never been into metal, I thought it was like something that sort of bad girls did, you know, going to rock gigs. So I felt a bit naughty going and it was an eye-opening experience. I remember being in the mosh pit and dragged along and thrown up in the air and you know, I had to be dragged out by my hair at one point. We were right at the front. Such an experience. And we saw Metallica and Megadeth and the Almighty. And I'm holding up the ticket there and this is the outfit that I wore still got the necklace and I think I've still got the vest top somewhere can't fit in those shorts anymore so they went in the bin but I do still have those boots and I've had those boots since I was 16 and I still own them so I don't know how many people can say that so I'm just going to show you those so here's the boots so they were low they were quite flat but they were proper made in Italy posh ones I've had them resold over the years but, but they've lasted but but they've got like a kind of bit that goes over your knee and the proper leather inside and out Italian made they're beautiful so I'll never get rid of those but but that's what I wore to an outdoor gig and then funny story we were getting the train back and we got about halfway back and they said our, our trains were gonna have to stop somewhere and we were going to have to wait there was some problem on the line and then by the time we got back to Northampton which is where we lived at the time all the buses had stopped so I had to walk about five miles in that outfit <laughs> all the way down the Wellingborough Road which is like kind of the pub and club street and that all of the the pubs were kicking out at that time and and they weren't pubs where you'd wear this kind of an outfit so yeah I didn't care though <laughs> at that time I was quite fearless and I would just do whatever I wanted I was being quite a rebel and I used to live a little bit of a double life at that time because I was working in a bank and so I'd wear all of my demure outfits like you've seen earlier uh, in the daytime but then I'd rock chick myself up at night and so I used to buy spray in hair colours I think you still get similar today or I'd buy hair chalks and just like spray the roots and then back comb it to try and get it to, to look a bit more goth and you can't see the makeup there but I really like went to town on my makeup as well to kind of fit in with the people that I was now mixing with and I think that's something that you do when you're younger definitely you don't find your own style you kind of like 
adapt to the company that you're in. I think I still do that in a little way even now. And then I've got one other which was a few years later. So I do know the date of this one and this one was in 2003 and I went to see Marilyn Manson. Seen Marilyn Manson three or four times. Uh, he was on the bill at the very first download festival when it was just a one day event. Uh, Iron Maiden were headlining it and I went with a friend of hardly knew because I wanted to go and I didn't know anyone that was going it was just someone in my street that was going and, and I tagged along and I really wanted to see him do a full gig because at that particular one somebody like threw a bottle onto the stage and it hit him and he stormed off and we didn't get to see the rest of the gig so we went to Birmingham NEC to see him me and my best friend at the time and her husband and I've got a few of the bits that I'm wearing here still but Definitely got that skirt, so I'll show you that. So this is the skirt that I was wearing in that picture. It's got kind of stretchy black fabric on the back and then kind of a polyurethane-y kind of stuff on the front. And I can still get in this, it's quite stretchy and I do still wear it now and again, but I wouldn't wear it with those over the knee kind of sock things that I've got on there. But What's interesting about this picture is that I'd started to dye my hair and kind of experiment a little bit with that. So it was the orange phase. I had orange hair for about a year. I used to crimp it, I used to live it like that. And I used to go to a lot of rock gigs at that time. There was a friend of mine that I met um, at my place of work and we'd go to a club called Bass Clef. And there's a rock bar which is sadly closed due to covid they just run out of money and they closed it's just so sad to me but there was a a rock bar called the king billy and we'd go there first for pints of cider and then end up in this this bass clare rock club and it was just all heavy metal and rock music and i just loved it so much but yeah that's me at that time also in that photo i was wearing some very stompy boots and i've still got those as well so that that's the the boots from that photo which weren't expensive I think they were somewhere like Topshop I think I bought them but I love them so much and I used to wear them to death so so yeah still got those got another picture of the red hair I think this was taken just before we went to that rock gig and I've got my hair tied back but that's how how deep it was when I first had it done and used to wear a lot of crop tops in those days as well so that was me on the beach in Hunstanton on a day out but when I'd only just had my hair coloured red I always wonder if I should go back to that and do it again because I did like it but I used to look so ghostly pale if I didn't have any makeup on it definitely changed my appearance a lot and I wear my glasses in that picture because I am really short-sighted I have to wear contact lenses to do my makeup now um, but yeah that was me probably getting on for 30 years ago in that picture. Okay, so I thought I'd just finish this by showing you just a, a few pictures of me going to events or nights out and what I wore through the time. So this one is definitely dated by the Christmas decorations again. It was at the second house that me and my second husband live in. So I think it was late eighties, maybe early nineties. And I hired this dress, it was gonna be his work's Christmas party and I just wanted to look incredible in this dress. I was a little bit nervous because I'm meeting his work and all of their colleagues. So wearing this dress and went to the hairdressers, told the guy he was gonna do it, I just wanna look fabulous and I've got this blue long dress. He's like, I know what I'm gonna do. And my hair was really long at that time and he pinned it all up. And I think I look a little bit like Marie Antoinette Eskin this actually. My husband thinks I look like Helena Bonham Carter, which is very flattering for him to say, and it's still one of his favorite photos of me. Although I didn't look like that very often. So, so yeah, I felt really glamorous. Haven't really got much makeup on in that other than it looks like red lipstick. I didn't used to ever do my eyebrows. So my eyebrows are very pale because of my hair color naturally being quite light. So. I never used to do brows at all really and yeah very very minimal makeup in that one. This next one brings back some memories. I was going out on a Halloween night out, I wanted to go as a devil so but I'm showing you this one because I used to wear a lot of these cat suits like this so this one's a lace kind of really skin tight cat suit 
and yeah I thought it looked amazing in it don't think I'd wear it now and it just goes to show how much my confidence has dropped since I've sort of turned 50 it's definitely in a woman's life a time when you don't feel like as exuberant as you used to you feel like a former shadow of yourself well, I certainly do and so I very rarely dress up anymore I mean we're in lockdown we're not going anywhere but but the fearlessness I used to have and the things I used to wear, it's kind of a little bit sad when I'm looking back at this. So if we ever do get out of lockdown, I think I need to have a night out where I just get some of these exuberant outfits and just get out there and enjoy fashion again. But yeah, that was me in 2015. This one here is me in 2012. Again, I was going to a rock gig and there's a club in Bedford and I can't remember the name of it, Esquires I think it is, that's where I was going anyway and it was just rock bands that were on but not bands that you would know but just really enjoyed the music that they did and it was cheap to get in, cheap cider, <laughs> that was always what I was all about on a Friday night, just going and having lots of cider and just going to a rock gig basically so still do own those shorts can't get in them anymore I think I got rid of the top because again I can't fit into it which is another recurring theme of why I don't dress up anymore so but yeah that's me in 2012 and I think we'll finish with me in a red dress because that's fitting because it's my favorite color this is me on a cruise in 2009 looking very polished and formal and yeah wearing my favorite color so I hope you've enjoyed seeing these. It's been a lot of fun just to show you some of the pictures of the past and share with you some of my, my fashion faux pas, but also my journey through fashion through the years and kind of what influences my style to this day. And I definitely urge you to go and watch Jane's video. I found it really, really interesting to watch. I can't wait to watch the second part. I'm going to do that once I've edited this. But I'll drop her channel and both of the videos that she's done with her photographs of her fashion through the ages down in my description box. Because I think if you've enjoyed this one, then you'll enjoy watching that as well. So Jane, thank you for the idea. And guys, thank you so much for watching. As I say, if you're new to my channel, this isn't the kind of thing that I normally do. It's normally makeup tutorials, makeup and beauty based, but just wanted to do something a little bit different today. So I hope you might consider subscribing anyway. The next video will be a makeup tutorial of sorts. Haven't decided what yet. So drop some suggestions if you want to see anything in particular. But other than that, guys, as I say, thank you for watching and hopefully catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.